Four-time Mr. Olympia, Chris Bumstead, recently listed off his top 10 exercises to build muscle. If you only had 10 exercises to stay as muscular as possible, give me the list. Squats. If it's my whole life, I might actually do some Smith Machine squats. Deadlifts, pull-ups, inclined dumbbell press, dumbbell shoulder press, close grip flat bench, dumbbell curl, bent over row, probably like a hanging leg raise. I would probably do lateral raises just to get some meaty delts over. The question now becomes, how can we create an effective training program using only those 10 exercises? We develop physiques, we train, we educate, and we empower. My name is Alex Bush. I am the co-owner of Physique Development, and I have been working one-on-one -on -one with clients to reach their fitness goals for the last decade. I've written hundreds, if not thousands, of training programs for clients who have a fully equipped gym or just having minimal equipment. When I first heard this podcast, I thought it was a great opportunity to provide a resource for individuals who only have a barbell, a bench, dumbbells, and a rack that still want to build muscle. The first link in the description is a free three-day training program using these 10 exercises for you to build muscle. Now, I'm not here to debate if Chris was right or wrong in the exercises that he selected. He was put on the spot on a podcast and gave exercises that hit every muscle group. The first exercise was squats and specifically the Smith machine squat because it feels good for Chris's knees. And if you feel the same way, keep doing your thing. The other option would be the barbell back squat. And if you don't feel comfortable with the barbell back squat, maybe you utilize the dumbbell goblet squat. And if you're wanting to have a greater challenge on the stability side of things, maybe you move to a back foot elevated split squat. All of these exercises are going to be targeting the adductors, the quads, the glutes, and your core throughout each of the movement patterns. And so you're getting a lot of bang for your buck when performing this movement. The second exercise was the conventional deadlift. Other variations that you could use here would be the bent knee RDL, utilizing dumbbells, a barbell, the trap bar, or even kettlebells, whatever is most comfortable to you and is available at your gym. This is going to be targeting the glutes, the hamstrings, the lower back, your core, as well as your adductors are doing a little bit in there as well. So again, a lot of bang for your buck with this exercise. The third exercise is a neutral grip pull-up. And there's not a great variation to this exercise when we only have a barbell, a bench, a rack, and some dumbbells. But if you do have cables available to you at your gym, go ahead and perform a neutral grip pull down. And if you don't feel comfortable with the pull up or feel as though that you cannot get a rep at your current body mass, what you could do is utilize a band under your feet to have some support. Or if your gym has the supported pull up machine, you could also do that. This exercise is going to target the lats, the upper back musculature, as well as the biceps. So you're going to be getting a lot of that posterior chain through your upper body in this exercise. The fourth exercise was the incline dumbbell bench press. This is honestly one of my personal favorites, a movement that I have been incorporating for a very long time to increase this bird chest to something of substance. <laughs> You could sub a barbell incline press or a Smith machine incline press for this particular movement. This is going to be targeting the upper portion of the chest. It's going to be targeting a little bit of the triceps and a little bit of the delts. The fifth exercise is the dumbbell shoulder press. Variations of this, you can do it seated or standing, or you could utilize a barbell in the same fashion. If you're wanting to challenge the most muscle groups and challenge your core during the exercise, you could do a barbell standing overhead press. If you're wanting the most stability and comfort, I would recommend the seated dumbbell overhead press. This exercise is going to challenge the anterior portion of the delt, your triceps, and when performing the barbell standing option, you'll be able to target more of the upper back musculature as a whole. The sixth exercise is the close grip barbell bench press. The variation to this is going to maybe be a little bit more joint friendly for the greater majority of you, and that will be the dumbbell skull crusher. This exercise is going to have a greater isolation to the triceps, but when performing the close grip bench press, you're going to get a little bit more of the chest involved relative to the variation within the dumbbell skull crusher being much more isolated to the triceps. The seventh exercise is the supinated dumbbell bicep curl. 
And the main reason he added this one in is because it is fun. And who doesn't love just a juicy bicep pump that generally comes from an exercise like this? There's not really going to be a substitute for this particular exercise. Just grab the dumbbell and curl the dang weight. The eighth exercise is the barbell bent over row. The variations for this are going to be a single arm variation, which you could just do a single arm dumbbell row. Or if you are in a situation where your lower back is a limiting factor and you don't feel comfortable bending over in the fashion that you would for either of these other variations, you could do a prone dumbbell row and use the bench as a chest support. This exercise is going to be targeting the upper back musculature. It's going to be targeting a portion of the lats, the rear delts, and your biceps. The ninth exercise may be the very exercise as to why Chris is your girlfriend's favorite bodybuilder. That exercise is the hanging leg raise. This is a very hard movement. And with the variations, they're actually regressions to that particular exercise. And so the first regression is going to be performing a gar hammer crunch on a decline bench. And if you don't feel comfortable there, you can put the bench to a flat setting and still perform the gar hammer crunch and target your core in a very similar fashion. The final exercise is the dumbbell lateral raise. If there was one movement that I was required to perform every single day in the gym, this is probably it because I love a great delt pump and it just feels good to have this exercise in your program. In terms of variations, you may find yourself in a situation where when performing this exercise, you don't feel a lot of your medial delt and you may feel a lot of your traps taking over. An easy fix to this is putting a chest support option in place, leaning into the bench, and it will force your arms to be in a better position for you to target your medial delt. When creating this training program, there were a handful of things that I kept in consideration when writing each workout. You should keep these considerations in mind when you're writing your training programs in the future as well. How often are we loading the spine? Are we performing the most challenging exercises at the beginning of the training session? Can we recover the muscle groups trained by the next workout? Is there redundancy to the exercises selected throughout the same workout? Can each session be completed within 45 to 60 minutes? Do we have adequate volume and intensity to make real progress? Throughout this entire program, you're not going to have a ton of exercises at your disposal. So intensity and intent to really challenge yourself within each and every set is going to be tremendously important to you making real progress. And the most important question of them all, can we look like Chris Bumstead? four time Mr. Olympia when performing these workouts. Only time will tell. You'll have to hit the first link in the description box to download the free training program to find out for yourself.